Hey everybody, welcome back to Brothers in Air. If you remember, I made a video about eight or nine months ago uh, about my little mobile setup, you know, take it anywhere, 12 volt mobile setup with this uh, Tuxin compressor here, this little guy. So, I figured I'd give you a quick update to start off with. Let me see here. I always keep logs, you know, of, of, of everything that I got going on with each gun, with each compressor, you know, anything I got, I keep a log. So let me see here. And I've had this thing now to date uh, for a year, you know, plus or minus a few days, but I've got 1,693 top offs on this little guy. And I've got 73 fills uh, from completely empty tanks on up. So for the uh, 300 and some bucks I paid for this thing or whatever, it has more than uh, paid for itself and then some. And, uh, but what I want to show you is how to keep this little guy running just like mine has for, you know, like I said, up to a year and it's still running just like it was uh, on the first day I got it. So I'm going to show you how to give this thing a little bit of TLC. And also if you noticed, uh, you, you know, in your little kit, you got, you, we call them rebuild kits, but this isn't really a full rebuild kit. But anyways, you've got all these little O-rings and uh, a couple new seats for uh you know delrin seats or whatever those seats are to replace in the distribution block this four-way block everything in there has got a a, a delrin seat in there so that's what those are for and all the little o-rings are for uh, you know your fittings and stuff like with your uh fill whip and all that kind of jazz so we're not going to talk about those at all that's all pretty uh self-explanatory but if you notice, you've got these bigger uh, two that came in your set. So I'm going to show you where these go uh, in the pump and show you how to change them out. And uh, like I said, just give this thing a little routine maintenance and, uh, you know, keep it running strong and smooth and uh, keep things lubricated. So I do have quite a bit of experience with both wet and dry uh, pneumatics, you know, with compressors. So I definitely wanted to share this because I, I know in my heart of hearts, this thing, after that many fills, this thing would not be running uh, like it is to, to this day um, without the routine maintenance I gave it. So you're going to see things when you buy dry compressors like uh, oil free, maintenance free, you know, things like that. What that basically sums up to is uh, disposable. So, you know, that uh, unfortunately, that's the way a lot of products are these days. You know, they, uh, they're just disposable. You know, you run them until they crash, and then you toss them in the garbage and get a new one. And, and they find uh, new, unique ways to make things even, uh, you know, out of cheaper materials, and uh, just to make a cheaper product that's even more disposable. So, I'm going to show you how to keep this thing uh, lasting as long as you can. So, anyways... Oh, and here we go to the uh, maintenance schedule. I, you know, I can't speak on, uh, you know, what you should do, but I can tell you what I've done. So I've used this compressor outside of being on vacation a few times. I've used this compressor uh, every single day. So it has seen use every day of the week, uh, like I said, except when I've been gone. So I have every three months uh, done this little routine maintenance that I'm about to show you and relubed and uh, cleaned everything. Now, if you just didn't like to moderate use, I would say, uh, you know, maybe every six months or something like that. But there's no reason that this compressor uh, couldn't last you for years and, and provide you with just uh, like you see, you know, I'm, I'm nearing 2000 top offs, you know, so it's been excellent. Well worth the money. I, you know, I, I've never uh, I don't own any large vessels. This is all, you know, compressor to gun direct fills. But uh I hear guys talking about 30 and 40 bucks, you know, every time they go fill up their, their bottles and stuff. So I would say that this thing has provided me with immense, immense amount of value and enough about that. But anyway, also I have no affiliation with the company or anything like that. Uh, I just want to help you guys out, you know, so you know what's going on and also so you can change these seals. So first thing you want to do is disconnect any external power sources from the the terminals here the input terminals because you don't want any accidents you know you flip a switch and the pump comes on or something so make sure that you're disconnected and you have no power going to the unit and then what you want to do is take out your uh air relief knob you know the, for the air relief valve 
And if you notice, I've got a quick disconnect on here in the top in place of where the gauge would be. And that'll be the only difference between mine and yours. And that's just so I can use different gauges than the, the gauge that came on it. But uh, just to save us some time here, I did already remove the screws that hold the upper housing to the lower housing. So there's two on the top and five on each side. And uh, like I said, I've already removed them. So what you're gonna do is get your lid up and off. You know, they've got about a mile's worth of uh, wire here for your thermometer. So the first thing you wanna do quick, you know, the thermometer's got a couple clips on each side. You're just gonna depress them and push it up and through the face of it. Let's see if I can get this here. And then turn it sideways where it can fit. Take it out of the housing so you can just, uh, you know, set the housing to the side. And then just go on ahead and cut, you know, make sure you got some new zip ties you can use when you're done with the process, but just go ahead and cut those zip ties that are around the pump and that are holding on uh, the thermometer and the probe for the thermometer. So let me get these out of here quick. All right, so now we can completely remove the entire thermometer and the probe that goes onto the pump and everything. If yours is like mine, oh, here's another thing real quick. If you have the Hatson Spark, it is literally the, it's identical, okay? But please make sure before you do any of this stuff that you check with Hatson and, and, and check up on your warranty status and what it would take to void your warranty, you know, because I, I don't really know. So, uh, you know, you're on your own on that one, but just make sure you do your homework so you don't get yourself in a spot where uh, you don't want to be. Anyways, so we've got the upper housing off and the thermometer disconnected. And the next thing we're going to do is remove the distribution block via the two screws here that hold it to the side. So you need a three millimeter Allen. And let's get these out of here. All right, so now we can just set these to the side. And the next thing you want to do is we're going to, you know, if your wires came, you know, they're all kind of bundled up in the front here in front of the motor, between the motor and the housing by the switches, just cut that zip tie so you can free them all up and loose them all up. Because uh, to be honest with you, it really doesn't matter where your wires are running as long as they're not in anywhere over here by the mechanics of the pump, you know, where they could get caught up and twisted and, and uh, mangled up. So don't worry about that. Just cut that tie so all your wires are loose because what we're actually gonna do is take this right out of here and set it to the side so we've got uh, freedom to work on it. So the next thing you're gonna do, and uh, I'll put up a picture for reference, but uh, maybe take your own picture, you know, just so you can reference and see where each wire goes on the switches but it's very simple, you know, from the motor, it, it hooks to the bottom of the switch. And uh, then the top one goes to your input terminal here. And then the fans run off the little switch, you know, the double wire goes on top. It's real easy, but I'll put a picture up anyhow. So take a needle nose and yank all those terminals off of your switches and get those disconnected. So now I've got my wires disconnected and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take the pump. We want to take the whole unit out of the lower housing and get it where we can access everything and work on it. So the way you're going to do that is via these four bolts on the bottom. These four bolts mount the unit into the lower housing. You need a 10 millimeter socket and uh, I'm going to use this impact just for ease of speed. For you guys so i'm not sitting here cranking on a wrench all day All right, so now, as you can see, we've loosed it up from the lower housing. So now we'll be able to take it on up and out of there. I'll try to turn this in a way that you guys can see it. 
Now, what you're going to do for purposes of, of clearance, it just helps. You're not going to damage this copper line or anything, but take the distribution block and just hold the motor in place and bend it back away from there. So it's back and the, uh, the male quick disconnect, you know, that you hook your line up to is back and out of the way. So you can get it up and out of here and clear the hole that it sticks out of. So now that I've bent that back just a touch, what I'm going to do, you know, now your wires might be kind of finagled all around and stuff, you know, just be careful and, uh, you know, work your way around until you get this thing up and out of here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip it back like this and pull the face of it just a little bit to give myself a little clearance. And now I can take it right on up and out of here. And it might be beneficial. I usually don't, but maybe I will just for purposes of the video. Well, here, let's do it now. So now you can see I can take the whole compressor and set it right to the side where I can work on it. And I'm just going to take what you should do probably before you pull it out of there is remove this rear fan here. You just got two Phillips screws and uh, we're just going to take it and drape it across the front there by the switches so that it's up and out of the way. And that way, when you take the, the whole uh, pump and everything out of the lower housing and when you put it back in, you don't have this fan wire running across the top because it goes up and over the top of, uh, you know, the pump motor and stuff. So let me set them to the side and all you're going to do then is just take the fan and drape it over the front, you know, just get it off to the side. And what I'm going to do is spin this here like this. So now, like you can see, I've got the whole unit out and I can work on it now and uh, do what I've got to do. So the next thing that you want to do, let me get this in a good position. I'm just going to tip it upside down here. This little uh, brass nut here on the bottom, that's your air intake. And it's got one of them little uh, brass, you know, metal filters built into it, you know, with all the little porous uh, brass sitting in there. Kind of like, a, you know, it's just like a, an oil breather nut, you know. I don't know how else to describe it to you, but anyways, I'm not sure on the size on this. Let me see here. Okay. What do I got here? A 12? All right. The 12 will work. What you're going to do is pop that out real quick. There's no seal in there or anything. It's just for your air intake, so you don't have to worry about it being sealed or none of that. And go and take some brake cleaner or some carb cleaner, something like that, and blast through there. And then take your air compressor and some compressed air and blow it out, you know, or whatever. Uh, just to get that clean. Make sure you've got, you know, the air can pass through there real nice and the filter's not getting clogged. And then uh, maybe go down in there and wipe out in the hole, you know, if you see some uh, debris or whatever, you know, some particulate matter. And then screw it back in. And, uh, you know, you just have to snug it down lightly. It doesn't have to be tight. You know, like I said, there's no seat. There's no seal. It's just for your air intake, so it doesn't need to be sealed. All right, so now we've got that uh, intake filter clean. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to remove this uh, transfer port here, this transfer tube. Now, what this does is transfer air from the first stage over to the second stage. But we want to get that up and off of there. So all you need is an eight millimeter and a 10 millimeter wrench. And all you're going to do is take your 10 millimeter wrench on the bottom, you know, secure it onto the bottom of the fitting and then use your eight and loosen, hold the bottom one and loosen the compression nut on each of them and get that all the way loosed up. And then we can pull this off of here. All right, so once you break them loose, you can just loosen them by hand. So we're going to take out this transfer tube and, you know, don't mess with it at all. Don't mess with the ferrules or the compression nuts. Just maybe blow some uh, compressed air through it. Make sure it's got good, you know, passage and it's not uh, clogged up with any ring material or anything like that. The compression rings in here are made of a carbon graphite in, in this particular compressor. Uh, compressor. So you're going to find that throughout the, the pump in the system there that you've got this fine 
particulate graphite matter, you know, it's going to be probably greasy and oily, uh, you know, just like a greasy, oily, pasty graphite, basically. So maybe uh, wear gloves when you're cleaning up the pump and stuff. But anyways, th those compression rings, they wear. And the result of that is that that uh, particulate graphite, you know, that builds up in the pump and it can work its way through, you know, into the lines and different things. So anyways, we've got our, compre our transfer tube off of there. And so the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to call this the, the first stage side of the pump here, closest to the uh, mounting bracket. And we're going to call this the uh, second stage side of the pump. Okay, so first stage, second stage. This first stage uh, compression nut that's in here, or I mean a uh, compression fitting that's screwed into the block here. There's nothing under there. There's no anything. It's already sealed probably with red Loctite or some kind of thread sealer. So just don't even loosen it or take it out. But on the second stage side here, what you've got is a Viton O-ring underneath there sealing it. And you've got just like that oil breather nut for the air intake, you've got one of those little brass uh, screeny filter deals down in there. So what you want to do and you might even have to heat this up a little bit because if they've got some red Loctite on there, but maybe just buzz over it with a torch, you know, just get it nice and warm so it breaks loose for you. And use a closed end, you know, use a 10 millimeter socket, use a, uh, the closed end of a wrench. Don't use an open end or a vice grips or anything like that because with that Loctite on there, it's going to really be holding down and you don't want to mangle your, your fitting, you know, you don't want to mal shape it or malform it, you know, from the pressure of it. So just use a closed end. So let me pop this out of here real quick. So I'm gonna take this fitting out of here and I'm just gonna show you pop-ups of it cause there's no point in me dragging all this out of here. But you'll see right below the fitting, you've got a Viton O-ring and then below that is where you've got your little uh, brass filter. So just pull out your O-ring, wipe it down, clean it up, you know, re-oil it for installation. And uh, same thing as with the uh, you know, oil breather air intake nut. Take some, take, you know, take a pick hook and get in there and get that brass filter out of there and hold it with a, a needle nose or a pliers or something, maybe blast some brake cleaner through it or something like that, you know, and then hit it with some air. Um, you're gonna find some ring material in there that that filter stopped up. So you definitely wanna clean out that filter and make sure that you've got good airflow going through the pump that way. And then just uh, drop back in your uh, brass filter, drop back in your O-ring and then put your fitting right back in. And, you know, in my opinion, you don't need to uh, re-lock tight it, you know, because you're going to be in and out of here from time to time. So there's really just no point. And all, just screw it down by hand till you feel it make contact with that O-ring. And then uh, just give it another, you know, eighth of a turn or something, quarter of a turn. That's all it takes. You know, you don't want to mangle and pancake up that O-ring against that uh, brass filter. So now we've got that done. The next thing we're going to do no, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning, anyhow, as to the bigger O-rings for the for the rebuild on the pump, and uh, also you may get a leak anywhere on the on the on the uh, unit. So, what I would do is take the upper housing off like we did, and take some really soapy water and maybe like a little watercolor paintbrush or something, and bring the compressor up, you know, to pressure with a dead head or something, and then shut it down. Or, uh, you know, even as it's going up to pressure, you can do it, whatever. Do it while you're filling a gun. But just take and paste all your different fittings and all your different spots. And you want to get air all the way around this cylinder up against these square blocks on each end. And just watch for bubbles. Make sure, you know, if you're uh, leaking air, you want to find out where it's coming from. You don't want to blindly just go in here and start tearing into everything. You know, there's no point. So be sure before you uh if you do actually have a leak and, and it won't hold pressure you know be sure that you do that first you know check for leaks to see where you're at with that but anyway back to the process here so we've got the uh, air transfer tube off and we've cleaned the filters uh, for the air intake and for the transfer side here on the uh, second stage side of the pump the next thing we're going to do is we need to take the pump off of the uh, mounting bracket that connects it to the motor. So I'm gonna flip it up like so. And uh, this is probably the easiest position to work on it, you know, flip it up like this. You don't need to remove this, uh, this line here or the distribution block or any of that. You can leave it on there the whole time you're doing all this stuff. 
So the first thing we're going to do is release the piston shaft uh, from the bracket here. You know, the, the uh, you know, whatever this deal is, you know, this little pinion deal. Anyways, you can move the compressor by hand, you know, just take it and move the, move the you know, wheel, whichever direction that you need to in order to cycle the piston and move the shaft where you can get at it. And then you need a four millimeter Allen and we're going to these two uh, cap screws that hold the piston shaft on. We're gonna loosen those now. So I'm gonna break these loose and get them out of here. Set these to the side. I didn't find any Loctite in any of the components besides the fittings, but you know, you might, you might have some in there. You never know. Maybe the uh, assembly guy was feeling ambitious that day or something. All right, so now we've taken out these two cap screws uh, with the four millimeter hex that hold the piston shaft onto the uh, assembly here that runs it and drives it. Now, the next thing we need is actually again the four and you're going to see that the pump is mounted via these four long uh cap screw bolts you know that go right through the uh mounting bracket here and through both blocks and into into the back side and it holds it all together it holds the pump together and it also mounts the pump to the uh bracket here so it's a two-fold thing going on but anyways if you look closely before you detach these you've got a metal washer in between the first stage block and the mounting bracket on all four of them. You wanna make sure you don't lose those and you wanna make sure when you're uh, reassembling things that you got them in there because that's actually acting as a spacer. And if you didn't have them in there or you put them on the wrong spot, you know, on the backside here or something, whatever. I mean, I guess you couldn't put them anywhere else really. It'd be stupid to have them on here. They might not even fit, but Anyways, those are a spacer, and if you do not have them in there, uh, your compressor is going to lose some clearance, and the piston is able to actually bottom out and slam in there, and that's the last thing you want. So pay close attention to those and don't lose them. And uh, again, four millimeter, you're gonna find probably some Loctite. I, mine was anyhow on these four. You might have to hit them with a torch for a second and heat them up just slightly and get them to break loose easy for you. But anyways, you're just gonna come through like this, and break all four of these loose and uh just turn them out all the way till they're till they're loose you know see this here i can just back it out just a little bit so just turn them out till they're all the way out loose but don't pull them all the way out of there there's no reason to uh yank them all the way out All right, three down, one to go. And any time that, the, you know, any of this is in your way, you can just move it how you need to, you know, just rotate the motor. It doesn't matter which direction. You're not going to hurt it. You can uh, readily move the piston or if you want, you know, for the pump, it's not going to hurt anything. So now we've got all four of the mounting uh, screws loose. And we can take the pump right up and off of here, see? I can just take it and slide it right off. There we go. Now, this we can just kind of get out of the way here and set to the side, uh, because now we're just gonna concentrate on the pump itself. Now, remember, unless you've got a leak in this distribution block and you need to you know, change out one of them seats, don't even touch none of that. Don't loosen this. There's no check valves in there or anything you need to worry about. But, uh, all right, so we've got our pump out. Now. What I'm going to do is take the first stage block and I'm just going to slide it right off of the piston or whatever. The piston might come out of here, but the first thing I'm going to do is get this off of here. So just gently slide it off of the shaft like that. I wouldn't really rotate it too much because there's some sharp edges here and there is a PTFE seal that seals the shaft to this uh, block, you know, and seals the, the cylinder here on the backside for the backstroke of the pump. 
and you don't want to shave on it or nothing taking you know you don't want to gouge it or shave it if you end up applying some side pressure while so just try to slip it straight off you know maybe a slight wiggle but uh so now we've got this side of the block off now i'm going to go ahead and i can just pull the piston right up and out of here just like so so now we got our piston out of the pump and now the pump cylinder just just like it came off of uh the other block it just slips right off so just give it a little turn and pull it right off now we got that off so now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to concentrate on the uh, second stage block here remember we called the uh, closest one to the mounting bracket the first stage and we're calling this one that leads us to our distribution the second stage in the second stage block so what you're going to see once you get this apart this is your second stage uh, compression cylinder on the inside and there's a little piston there's a smaller piston within the larger piston head and that's what does your second stage compression there and the larger piston head does your first stage compression so anyhow you're going to see that there's a little check valve here a little rubber flap uh it's going to probably be all gummed up you know because you've got all that worn ring material on everything so take a towel or something you know and wipe everything down get everything real clean get inside of this uh this uh second stage cylinder here and and twist a, a napkin in there or whatever get it all cleaned out spick and span and remove all that worn ring material out of there now don't freak out when you see all this worn ring material it's just the way that a compressor with those type of rings works and that's the reason for this maintenance is because we're going to minimize that and actually extend the life of the compression rings themselves uh, by doing this like i said i did it every three months with heavy daily use I would do it maybe every six months with you know a light to moderate use but anyways take a little eyeglass screwdriver and a, a phillips you know and take out the screw that holds that rubber flap in there that's your intake check valve for the air that's getting sucked in and uh, feeding your pump so take that out of there and take that little rubber flap and wipe it down clean it up get it all spick and span clean out all the, all the gunk and stuff out of there and then get it screwed back down in there nice so it's just nice and clean and everything and I did open up the compressor last night and do all this already. I wiped it down, got it nice and clean for you guys, just for uh, purposes of the video. You know, I don't want to sit here on camera and be having to clean and do all this stuff. So if you're wondering why everything's so shiny, like I said, don't be alarmed when you see all this uh, graphite material throughout the pump. It's, it's to be expected and it's normal. So to these two O-rings that come in your rebuild kit, these two bigger ones, that's what these are for. They go around this lip here on each block and they seal each block on each end of the pump cylinder. So that's what's going to come into play. Now, in a year, I haven't had to change them. They don't leak and they're still good. So I'm not going to change them now. There's no point. A lot of guys, you know, they just because they're in something, they'll change them out. But unless you've got a steady supply of them, I wouldn't do that. I would keep your new ones new and good. And, uh, you know, it's only take 15, 20 minutes to change them out anyway. So just change them once they're bad. Like I said, some soapy dish water and uh, pasting around the cylinder while it's under pressure. So you can see if it's actually leaking anywhere uh, on either end of the, the pump cylinder there. And then you'll know you need to replace uh, those O-rings. So anyway, we got the check valve cleaned. We wiped everything down. And uh, like I said, I would still pop this O-ring out with a pick hook and clean it up real nice and re-lube it with some uh, silicone oil and reinstall it. But it's still been good after a year, so I'm not gonna change them or do anything now. So now we've got this whole uh, high pressure block, or uh, second stage block, all cleaned up and everything done to it. We can set that to the side. Then take your pump cylinder and just clean it out really good. You know, wipe it all down inside, get all that ring material out of there and just get it shiny and spick and span and then set that back down and now we're going to go to the first stage block you know the block that mounts closest uh to the bracket here what you've got here like i said you don't need to loosen this fitting there's no uh there's no nothing sealing it besides thread sealer and there's no filter or anything it's just a straight pass through so you don't got to worry about that maybe take uh some high pressure you know some uh compressed air and blow through it you know it's just a pass through hole from here to here on the face on the inside so just blast it you know get some of that residue and gunk out of there maybe hit it with some uh carb cleaner you know blast through there and whatever and then some air whatever it takes to clean it out real good and then 
on the ID of this where the uh, piston shaft rides through here, like I said, there's a PTFE seal, a black PTFE seal in there. And what you want to do again is just get all this ring material, clean it up, you know, get in there on the inside on the ID where that seal is, wipe it all down, get it really nice. And then once you get it all cleaned up and everything like that, you can set that to the side. This, this one's done. There's nothing else you do to that. Now let's move on to the actual uh, piston itself. Do a little quick wipe here. All right. Now, like I said, it, the compression rings, which is the most forward end ring on the, uh, on the second stage piston head and on the first stage head, it's not removable, okay? So be very careful with this as well. It's brittle. Uh, you could drop this and chip it. You don't want to scratch this, this uh, piston shaft. You don't want to do anything like that. And you definitely don't want to try to take that, that carbon graphite ring off of there because you're gonna find real quick that the, you ain't gonna get it off of there without trashing it. So as of now, uh, I believe their intention was to not have a rebuild kit for this. Like I said, a lot of stuff is, is uh, you know, maintenance free, but that's disposable, you know? So as of now, just don't touch the uh, compression rings on there. You'll notice though, the second ring back from that, the other ring is actually a PTFE ring that is split. And this is just a guide ring. It's just a rider ring. So you can take these right off. You know, don't spread them way open and bend it or nothing, but just enough to get it off and remove both the riders. There's a rider, a big rider ring on the large piston head, and there's also one on the small piston head. And I'm not going to take them both off now. Like I said, I did this last night. But then what you're going to do is just wipe them down, you know, clean all that ring material off of there. And uh, then, you know, set them to the side once they're nice and clean. And then take your uh, towel or cloth or whatever and clean all this really nice. Get this piston head cleaned up, just spick and span as best as you can. And all you can do is wipe down the compression rings, you know. Don't try to get in between them or under them or any kind of weird stuff, you know. You don't want to damage them. So just wipe everything down like so. And then once you get everything cleaned up, you know, get in there with something in between, you uh, the small piston head and the chamber you know here get in there clean all that out and then after you get all that done before you put your uh, rider rings back on what you're going to see is that there's a check valve inside the piston head and it's just a a, a one-way check valve and it's a simple uh ball valve you know it's just got the little uh neoprene or, or rubber you know it's just got the little black rubber ball just like your hand pumps or any kind of little check valve like that and I'm not going to show you how to open up the piston head or none of that because it's really just not necessary. But I'll show you close up, you know, pictures here so you can see what I'm talking about. You know, all you've got to do is take, like I said, some brake cleaner or something and throw on your little straw, you know, so you can really concentrate your flow and just tip this thing down and give it a little few blasts, you know, in through this side on that ball and then stick it on the pass-through hole and blast some through that way and then take some compressed air and blast all of the uh, you know solvent out of there and everything get it cleaned up real nice and what that's going to do is loose up that uh, ring material that might be built up in there and keeping your check valve from being able to operate you know from that ball being able to open and close you know properly so get it all cleaned out in there blast it out you know air all that just like I said and then You've got everything cleaned up and wiped up, but well, here's another thing. What I did is I, did, I took a file and I filed this edge right here, okay? You see this 90 cut out of here so it can mount onto the, the, the drive there? What I did is this radius all the way across, I took a file and filed that down a little bit because when you're reinstalling it in here and you're putting the shaft back through the uh, first stage block, if you've got any you know pressure uh, cocked or anything, it's such a sharp edge, you're going to shear that seal a little bit, and you don't want to do that. So maybe take a file, you know, it's up to you, and knock down that edge, and then just take your air and blow it and wipe it down. Make sure you definitely don't want any residual uh, metals getting into the pump, you know. So if you do file it down, make absolutely sure that you take extra care to really clean this up and get it, you know, get it spick and span. Like I said, you don't want any metal particulate matter into the pump at all. It's just going to ruin it. So we've got all of that done. The next thing you're going to do is take your rider rings, your guide rings, 
and you, we've already cleaned them up. You know, we've cleaned up this all the way, the piston and everything and the heads. You're just gonna take a dab of low viscosity silicone oil, okay? Don't use a grease, just use an oil. You don't wanna use a grease on any of this except one part, so, and I'm gonna show you that. So take a dab of uh, silicone oil and, you know, get the inside edge of your ring all covered in silicone oil, and then take your ring and reinstall it back onto the piston head. Now, like I said, when you were removing it, I'm trying to get this hair off, like I said, when I was removing it, you don't want to spread it open any further than you need to to get it over the heads. You know, that's it. So get your uh, rider reinstalled onto the big piston head into the gland and uh, then get your small one reinstalled into the gland on the uh, second stage head there. And then after you've got the riders back on, you're going to take some silicone oil and just take a couple drops and put here and here and rub it all the way, well, I suppose I could even get a little bit up on here. And you don't want to drown your pump in oil, okay? You might think, well, I'm really going to oil it up. No, you're just going to muck it up, and, and it's going to run for shit, you know? it's going. To, you just want to coat this stuff in a, in a nice sheen, you know, a nice layer of oil. You don't want to douse it or nothing. So I'm going to put a small drop on each side of the, the big head here, and then I'm even going to put a drop into the uh, check valve, uh, that ball, you know, the rubber ball in the check valve in the piston head. And then I'm going to take and put a drop on my small piston head. And then I'm just going to take my finger and rub it all around, you know, and just coat it and work it in between the rings and in between those cracks and all around. And on the small piston head and on the large piston head. You might find that your rider ring, because you had to spread it open a little bit to get it off, that it doesn't want to seat all the way tight down into the gland. Uh, that layer of oil you put on it will help kind of surface suction it, you know, to the gland and it might stay, but it doesn't matter. Just get them on and so they're in place. And if it's open a little and uh, spread out, you know, we'll work it in as we reassemble things here. All right. So we've got all that, you know, oiled up. The heads are oiled and we put silicone oil all around. We put a drop of silicone oil in the check valve on the inside. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the first stage block that the piston shaft goes through and we're going to take some silicone grease okay and you don't want you, you could use oil too if you don't have silicone grease but it works a little better just to use some grease i'm actually going to get myself just a little more here so take a pretty fair amount of grease and what you're going to do is with your finger get on the inside of this block here and just coat that seal up real nice okay this whole inside, just coat it with the uh, silicone grease real nice. Work it in between the cracks and all around. And like, same as with the uh, oil on the, on the piston head and stuff. You don't want some big gunky excess of it, you know. Just a nice sheen and, uh, you know, a little bit worked into the, the cracks on the sides of the seal and stuff like that. But don't just, uh, you know, drown it in the stuff. So now that we've got that done, we can set this to the side here. And I'm going to set the uh, piston head on there so I don't have to set it down here and get fuzz on it or anything. And then take your uh, pump cylinder and put a dab of oil on each end on the inside. You know, just a good healthy drop, you know, a hearty drop. And then take your finger and work it all around where that's the, all the way from end to end, all the way up through to the middle and the other side. And just work that silicone oil all around in there. Now, this is key. And I'm warning you, do not attempt to do this if you don't have a silicone oil. If you use any petroleum-based oils, uh, you're going to have one hell of an explosion on your hands when this uh, aluminum pump cylinder gives and that petroleum product is dieseling under the, uh, under the high pressure and under the compression. So do not, do not, do not use anything but 100% silicone oil and grease. And be sure that you are 100% sure that that's what it is, okay? No guesswork on this one uh, because you're going to create a super dangerous situation for yourself and maybe others. So you've been warned. Anyway, so we've got silicone oil greased all up into, or rubbed all around here into the, the cylinder. And here's another thing I almost forgot. Also, take a, a drop of silicone oil on your seal, on your block. That seal, that seals the end of the pump cylinder. Maybe put a drop on each side and just run around 
all the way around till you get that coated up nice with a nice little sheen of uh, silicone oil. So now we're gonna take the second stage end uh, uh, block and we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to take just a, a, a little drop, very, very small amount, and just with our pinky, get into the little second stage cylinder and work it in just to the entryway of it. You know, you're not gonna be able to get down in there and it doesn't matter anyway, because we, we've already oiled the, the second stage piston head anyway, so it, it'll be oiled just fine. So just get a little bit on that entryway there. We're just gonna, you know, lube it just a little there. Get a dab of it on your uh, O-ring that seals the end of your pump cylinder and work that all the way around. All right, so now we've got everything maintenance and cleaned and re-oiled uh, and we're gonna reassemble now. So all you've gotta do, first of all, is take the high pressure block, or I keep saying the high pressure block, I wanna call it the low pressure end and the high pressure end, like I'm dealing with a regulator and, and the two sides or something. But anyways, we're gonna take the second stage into the block and it truly is the second stage in because it distributes the, the final high pressure air from the second stage and it also contains uh, the second stage compression pit, uh, chamber here too. So anyways, take your uh, cylinder, your pump cylinder, and reinstall it onto there. Just snap fit it on, you know. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take the piston and we're going to install that next. And the reason we're going to do that before we, you know, push it into the, the, the fitting there is because... You wanna make sure you can see real good down in here onto that second stage cylinder. And you wanna watch this rider ring, okay? That split ring on the smaller piston head, like I said, it might've opened up a little bit and you don't wanna just jam it in there. You wanna really work it and get it to seat nice and close up nice in the gland and, and go in like it should, you know? So take it like that with your cylinder where you can see really good and just get it in there and, and wiggle it, okay? Just wiggle it around and you'll feel it once it's seated nice, okay? Now that it's in there and seated nice, I can even, listen. See, you can even uh, compress some air by hand here. That'll also tell you if that check valve in the, in the middle of your uh, compressor is, you know, it'll work that oil around just a little bit for you. Give it a couple pumps, you know? But anyways, now that we've got the piston back in, what we need to do is install the first stage block end back onto the pump and put it all the way back together. So what you wanna do is just stick it through the hole and start feeding it on. Like I said, you don't really wanna uh, give it a whole bunch of twisty turny stuff. You know, you don't wanna shear any of that, that seal in there. So just very gently work it on and then look at it and apply pressure away from that edge that you filed just to make sure it, it slides on real nice and straight. So get this sucker on here there we go and once you get it on you know it'll just slide right on and you can just snap your whole pump back together and now you can really uh you know by hand you can you can run the the piston back and forth you know and and uh feel just how nice that is with that lube in there all cleaned up and stuff you're gonna find two noises that you get on these compressors and one is kind of just a eek, 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 eek. i'm terrible with noises so but what that is, is just a couple of your grease points, your bearings running dry, and you're hearing like this external squeaking noise, you know. If you start hearing, you're going to love this one. If you, when you hear a sound that sounds like, well, I got a mosquito or something in here. You hear a sound coming from internal, you know, it sounds deep. You can tell it's coming from in the pump. And uh, it'll almost sound, you know, like a seal. When a seal, oh hell, everybody's going to think I'm nuts, but kind of like a seal. It'll be like, as the piston is going back and forth in this cylinder, you're going to hear like, arr, 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 arr. You like that? But anyways, what that is, is everything's just starting to run so incredibly dry uh, that those rings are starting to make noise in there as it's compressing air and that piston head is sliding in the cylinder. So anyways, I hope you like that. But now, so we've got our pump fully put back together, right? So now you want to look down it and just line it up as best as you can, you know, square it up so that the two blocks on each end are square. 
And then the next thing I'm going to do just to uh, help hold it all together is I'm going to, while, before I attach it back, mount it to the motor, I'm going to put my uh, transfer tube back on there. So all we've got to do is get that back on can screw down the uh, compression nuts by hand till they're, till they're hand tight. Sometimes if you tighten one too far over the other one, you know, it'll kind of start to bind. Oh, heck, I'm putting it on backwards, that's why. You know, so it's just because the fittings and the bend was all lined up. But anyways, it doesn't matter which way it's on there, but you might get in a position where you're doing what I'm doing and trying to get that compression nut lined up right. But that's just because it's if there's a bend to it, you know, so it's two ways it can go on there. And uh, I was trying to put it on uh, backwards. There we go. And like I said, it doesn't matter which way you put it on. It'll work either way, but you might have a hassle getting those uh, compression nuts started. All right, so we'll just hold the bottom fitting and tighten down these compression nuts. Once you feel good, tight contact, all you've got to do is go another, you know, quarter of a turn or whatever, and them ferrules will, will snug down real tight in there. So just snug them down. If you go too far, you're just going to mangle this brass. All right, so now we've got our pump all the way uh, rebuilt, changed our seals if we needed to, serviced it, uh, maintenance oiled it, and we're ready to uh, reassemble it and mount it back to the motor. So get the motor back over here. Now, all, you can, like I say, you can move this piston around freely, you know, but uh, all you're gonna do is just feed it back onto there. Get this wire out of here. Just line up the holes and uh, feed it back onto there. Make sure that you've got your spacer washers in there mounted onto your bolts. And then we're just going to feed these through. So here we go. Now we're going to take our four millimeter Allen. Maybe get a couple of these started by hand here just to help hold things. Now what you want to do is, oh heck man, I, here we go with this shadowy. It's like I'm exploring a cave trying to get into that sucker. So just hold it against the, the face of it and snug them down finger tight. You don't want to crank them down just yet. So just once you get one finger tight, you know, you can just do the rest. So we'll get them all Finger tight down. All right, so now that they're, you know, finger tight, what you're gonna do is just look at it again and make sure that the pump hasn't twisted at all, you know, make sure that the blocks are still square with each other and you haven't turned it at all. And then once you're certain that it's square, you can go ahead and crank these down. And you can go fairly tight on these. I don't use any Loctite on any of this stuff and I haven't had a problem with anything coming loose or anything like that, you know, so snug them down good and tight, but you know, don't reef them like you're trying to take over the world or something, you know, just, just snug them down real nice. All right, so we got our pump mounted back on. Now what we've got to do is reattach our piston shaft to the uh, motor assembly here. This piece here, this little oval shape, uh, I don't know what you call it. This little cam or whatever. 
uh, what drives the pump. This can come out of here, you know, maybe pull it out and wipe it all down just to get it cleaned up and uh, get it nice and neat, you know, so you can re-grease things. You're gonna see on the bottom of it what rides in this guide slot here, a little roller bearing. So take an Allen wrench, let me see, what is it? Probably a four. Yeah, it's a four. So take, loosen that up, pop it out of there, slide the uh, bearing right off of the mounting screw and just take in, you know, a couple dabs of bearing grease, multi-purpose grease, whatever, red and tacky, whatever you got, and uh, re-grease that bearing, you know, get some, you know, work some uh, grease down onto the inside on them rollers, and uh, they're housed, you know, they're not gonna fall out or anything like that. So you can pull it right up and off of there and put some grease and then reinstall it onto there. All you gotta do is turn it and kind of finagle it into place here on the inside of this, and you can get it seated back right where it needs to be. All right, so now that we've got this bottom uh, bearing greased, what we're gonna do is reattach the, the piston uh, shaft to the assembly. So if you need to pull the, pull the uh, piston shaft out further and kind of line it up where it needs to be, and then rotate your pump wherever you need to, you know, spin the motor in order to rotate this piece and uh, get it into position where you need it to line up your holes so you can put these cap screws back in. So now we'll take the two screws and refasten the uh, shaft to this uh, motor assembly here. And I'm just gonna leave that one finger tight and get this other one in here. And then we'll go ahead and crank them down. And you're threading steel on steel with this, so you, you can crank these down real good and tight, you know? Not like you're trying to break something, but you know, you can really crank them down. I don't use any Loctite on these and I've never had them come loose, so just crank them down real snug. All right, now the last thing we need to do before we uh, mount everything back into the lower housing is uh, take care of maintenancing this uh, bearing here, this roller bearing. So what you're gonna need is a five millimeter Allen. And what you wanna do is just rotate things, you know, into position where you need them to be so that you can do what you gotta do. You can cycle the pump and the, and the motor back and forth, you know, it's not gonna hurt things. And then take and stick uh, like a wooden dowel or something in there so that you can hold, you know, the little square piece that, uh, the extension that goes from the uh, reduction gear to the uh, piston shaft, you know, you can hold it now. So you, now, now that the motor can't spin, the pump can't cycle and you can get leverage and loosen that, that uh, cap screw up that holds that bearing on there. And then in reverse, you know, just stick it up onto the top side here and keep it from spinning the other direction when you tighten that bearing back down, you know, that cap screw. But mine was completely dry from day one. It arrived completely dry. I'll show you some pop-up pictures. I took some pictures of it back in the day, but uh, just open that, you know, basically it's a, a needle, a needle uh, bearings, you know, and they're not housed. They're just sitting in there and the uh, outer ring and the inner ring are providing the races and, and holding it all together, you know? So if you just pull that thing and open it, all those needle bearings are gonna drop out and you're gonna be with the tweezers, you know, putting each one back into the, into the race, you know? So just open it slightly and work some grease in there on them, on them rollers, you know, open both in and, and work it in there and close it back up, stick it on and, uh, you know, tighten back down that cap screw, you know, use, uh, like I said, prevent it from, uh, spinning on you, you know, stick it on the top, crank it down good and tight and you're good to go. So now at that point, you know, we have fully, uh, basically rebuilt the compressor outside of the uh, rings on the piston, your compressor should be completely serviced and maintenance and ready to rock and roll for a long time again. So let's get it back into the lower housing and mount it up and put back together so we can uh, bring things to a close. All right, so just the same way I took it out, I'm just gonna leave that fan that I, you know, remember I uh, took this fan off and I just draped it over the front here. I'm just gonna leave it right there. And all you wanna do is make sure that you're not getting any wires up under your, your mounting plate here. So all I'm gonna do is the same thing. I'm just gonna tip it back in like this, get my wires up and out of the way, and just work this sucker back into here. 
like I say, you might have to, just like you did taking it out, pull the front just a little bit here to get some clearance. And then once you get it seated down on there, just look and make sure you don't have any wires coming, uh, you know, underneath that plate there. And then make sure that you've got access to all of your, all of your stuff here, you know, all of your plugs and all your wiring and kind of work it into the position that you want it to be in. So let me get these fan wires situated here. And like I said, it doesn't really matter uh, where your wires are running, you know, as long as they're not underneath that plate and as long as they're not anywhere here where the mechanics of the, of the drive for the pump are, you, you'll be fine. They can run any direction, any which way, whatever. Just make sure that you've got clearance to reach your switches, you know, with the terminals and everything like that. It might take you a minute, you know, finagling things around and moving things around to get, get everything set up how you need it to be with these wires. But once you get them all kind of up and set up here, you can take, remember we bent back that copper, this distribution block, we bent back that line a little bit. You can go ahead and bend that back up kind of into position, you know, just like so. All right, so now that we've got that done, what I'm going to do is install this fan back on. And like, as you saw, you know, the wires just drape over the motor and everything. So nothing too uh, difficult there. You get these two mounting screws in. Get the second one for the fan mounted here. Just snug them down. You're just threading into plastic, so don't go nuts. All right, now we can go ahead and reattach all of our uh, wires. So I'm going to do that now. On the fans, the single wire goes on the bottom of the switch and the double wire goes on the top. And then on the power switch for the motor and everything, the lead that comes from your motor goes to the bottom one. And obviously, like you see in your picture you took, you've got your red on the on the on the left when you're facing it, red on the left and uh silver on the right. And then on the top side of the switch, the two terminals is where your uh inputs go that come from your uh 12 volt input here. So no big deal there. Let's get all these terminals back on, make sure they're tight. And see, like I just accidentally flipped the switch, you know, that's why you want to make sure you don't have power connected while you're doing any of this. So now we got it all the way back in and uh, we can just take these wires and kind of tuck them in here, wherever it, like I said, it doesn't matter. And now we can put our bolts back in that mount the compressor uh, into the, onto the lower housing. So I'm just going to tip it like so and get all four of these back in. Just screw them on by hand. Once you get the top two in, you know, you got to kind of hold the unit up and line the holes up. Once you get the top two in, you can just let it rest against the uh, weight of it and put the bottom two in. Might have to move it a little and line up your holes. All right, so we got our four mounting bolts in. I'm going to go ahead and crank them down with this. Don't use any type of impact, uh, electric impact tool or anything on your air guns or your gear or anything. Don't uh, follow suit with my bad example here, okay? You're going to tear a hell out of stuff using an impact on it. All right, so now we're tight, we're mounted in. You got your fan wires, you know, just kind of tuck them down in so they're not in the way of anything. 
And then what you're going to do, last thing you're going to do is take your grease, your bearing grease or whatever, get some on your finger and run all in there uh, along that, that where the bearing, roller bearing rides and everything like that. Maybe work a little bit, you know, on the bottom side into this groove and, and stuff. But we're just going to get some little added grease in there around that surface area where the roller bearing rides around and drives the pump. Now, the only other thing we've got to do, which I don't have with me, anyways, I forgot them in the drawer there, but anyways, obviously you need a couple of new zip ties so you can get your thermometer back in, but I'm just going to zip tie it afterwards. So anyways, I'm going to take my upper housing and uh, put the thermometer through the hole, pop it back down into place like so. And then what I like to do is just tuck this little bundle of wires here, right in between the housing and the reduction gear right up here. And then all you've got to do now is take a zip tie and run a zip tie around all four of those bolts, you know, around the, the uh, pump uh, cylinder there and get your probe stuck in there for your thermometer and you're good to go. Like I said, I don't have a zip tie sitting right here, so I'm just going to do it after. And then once you get your thermometer hooked back up, you're good to go. You can get your upper housing back on and uh, reinstall the 12 screws that hold the upper housing on. And, uh, you know, put your uh, relief valve back in. And then the last thing I'm going to do, you could do it before you put the upper housing on. It really doesn't matter, but you can do it at any time. We've got to secure back this uh, distribution block to the lower housing. But the reason I said you can do it at any time, because you can access it, you know, after the housing's on or not, it doesn't matter. So let me get this on. Take my uh, three millimeter Allen here and crank this down tight real quick. All right, so now we've got the uh, distribution black block snug back down and attached to the uh, lower housing here, and we are done. Now we can go and put our uh, 12 screws back in that hold the upper housing on, and uh, you know we're ready to rock and roll. So I hope this video was super helpful for you guys. You know, like I said, if you own a Hats and Spark, which is in fact identical. Uh, still, you know, talk to uh, Hatson, you know, and find out what the limitations and boundaries are uh, with your warranty, you know, before you go ahead and, and tackle this, you know, find out what you're uh, able to do without possibly vi uh, avoiding your warranty. Oh, and here's just another quick tip. I've seen reports of guys uh, shearing off the shaft that goes from the motor uh, or goes from the reduction gear out to the to the roller bearing. And what happens is when you run your compressor, say, you know, you get up high temp, 90 degrees, 80 degrees, whatever you run yours up to, I've always kept mine at 70, 75, and I never let it get above that. Not to say that it couldn't, it certainly could go up to 90 every time you use it. Uh, but, you know, with heat, we have expansion and different things, and you're just going to take on more wear on those carbon graphite rings. So for me, I just always shut her down when she's at about 70, 75 and let it cool down and then finish filling if, if, if it's a big enough gun or I'm going from empty, whatever, you know. But what you wanna do when you stop the compressor and you still got the fans running so that it can cool, so that you can finish filling your, uh, you know, one liter bottle or your, your, your big uh, 480 cc tank, whatever it is, you know, it's gonna, you're gonna have to stage it uh, because of the temperature limitations. So what you wanna do is stop the pump, leave the fans running and then release your pressure. Get your pressure out of the system and then once the fans have cooled the system down enough that you can restart, you know, close your valve and restart your pump and let it repressurize from zero. Because uh, let's say you stop at, uh, you know, 150 bar and then you've got to let it cool. So you just leave everything under pressure. When you go ahead and hit that on switch again, 
Uh, this 12, this is a hardy 12 volt motor. It's got some torque and some power and it's, it certainly is more than powerful enough for the job at hand. So what'll happen is that piston head, you know, inside that cylinder, it's going to try to get going and moving again, compressing that air, but it's got to start up against 150 bar of pressure. So without any momentum and without it running already, trying to start up against that dead stop of that pressure, you're going to shear off that shaft that goes from the reduction gear out okay so just don't do that you know it only takes a second to repressurize your lines and your oil water separator and stuff going from the compressor to the gun uh, so just always release your pressure and then start up again pumping you know when you're staging your pumps to to keep the temperature down but uh anyways i think that's about all i can share with you guys on this little guy i hope that you uh found the video useful and, uh, and I hope it was all easily understandable and, and I did this in a way that, that anybody can use it and uh, keep their compressor running just as long as I've had mine going. This thing's still ticking away and uh, maybe we'll give you another update in six months or a year if it's still going or maybe I'll just do an update, you know, if it dies completely. But uh, also, like I said, there's no uh, actual rebuild kit that you can get that I can find and I've done a ton of research. Uh, even from the manufacturer, you know, they, they just don't want you to rebuild this one uh, fully. So until then, you know, once this once the rings wear enough that it no longer will will push pressure, you know, and, and compress, then what I'll do is I'll remove the rings and I'll maybe measure them and just order up some new ones from a company uh, that makes dry compressor rings. And we can go from there. Maybe I can shoot out some sizes or uh, some links to where I purchased them or whatever like that. But as always, man, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everybody's safe, healthy, all that crap. I hope you're just air gunning your ass off, having a blast. Uh, Cause I'm, you know, I'm daily, man. I'm daily getting my therapy. So you guys take it easy, man. Like I said, I hope the video was uh, helpful. Be careful. Always be mindful of what you're doing when you're working on your stuff. And uh, until next time, guys, be easy and uh, we'll see you.